In the 1960s, a prostitute named Magdalena Solis had an entire village believing she was an Inca goddess. All they had to do was hand over their money and sleep with whoever she directed for a reward. But then, everything started to get even more crazy. To begin with, as a young peasant girl, Magdalena Solis sold her body for a living, with her brother Elizar acting as her pimp. Magdalena's big break came, when she and her brother were approached by the Hernandez brothers, a pair of criminals who had a money-making scheme in mind, with a bit of sexual motivation. At first the brothers claimed that they were Inca priests, and said they had a wealth of gold to share, but the villagers' bodies should get cleansed by having sex with the priests repeatedly and often. This worked for them for a while, but eventually the villagers wanted to know where their promised gold was. So the Hernandez brothers needed to try something different. Using smoke and a dark, dank cave, they presented Magdalena as the reincarnation of an Inca goddess. This restored the faith of most of the villagers. The main problem with the Hernandez brother scheme was that they had chosen a sadistic mad woman to be their god. If the villager ever started to doubt, they would be named as unbelievers, and they would need to be sacrificed ritualistically. The ritual Magdalena favored consisted of the brutal beating, burning, cutting and killing. The victim's blood was then mixed with chicken blood and marijuana, and everyone should drink this mixture. And after that, everyone had to have sex with everyone else. She called this, the ritual of blood. It wasn't long before Magdalena had many fanatical followers in the villages. Over a six-week period, it is estimated that eight villagers were sacrificed in this manner. One night a teenage boy, named Sebastian Guerrero was walking in the woods, and heard sounds coming from a cave. He made his way over, and witnessed one of these sacrifices. He was so scared by what he saw that he ran 17 miles to the neighboring village to tell the police. The scene described by Sebastian was so far-fetched that the police didn't believe him. But the boy was obviously distraught, so to keep him happy they sent one officer back with him to the scene. Neither were ever seen alive again, the police officer's disappearance in particularly prompted the police to create a type of task force, made up of police officers and soldiers, to go in search of him. On 31st of May, 1963 the task force raided the site described by Sebastian. It was there, that they found the murdered remains of Sebastian and officer Luis Martinez. Martinez's heart had been torn from his chest. The police found Magdalena and her brother hiding at a nearby home. They were arrested without a struggle. The same cannot be said for the Hernandez brothers, nor twelve of Magdalena's villager followers. There was a classic shootout with the police which resulted in one of the Hernandez brothers being killed. It was later found that the other brother had been killed by one of their supporters, a man who had realized the truth and decided he wanted his own cut in the profits. The twelve followers were sentenced to thirty years in prison. It depends on what source you read to find out how long Magdalena and her brother were sentenced for. Some sources say thirty years, some say fifty years. Either way, who knows how long her bloodthirsty reign would have lasted, if the poor schoolboy didn't walk past that cave.